Hey everyone, this is Kit with Hardlands Media. Here on Hardlands Media, we've talked a lot about healthcare and the real impact of why we need to have single payer healthcare in this country. Now, I'm proud to reintroduce two guests that we've had on the radio in the past, as well as public television. Uh, I'm proud to reintroduce uh, Ed Klein and Jody Koss. Thank you so much for rejoining us here at Hardlands Media. I know that things have changed a lot since the last time you guys were at our studios when we were on the radio, but I think it's very important that, at least for our viewers and subscribers, um, they get to hear who you are. So, Ed, we'll start off with you. Can you just give us a short background on who you are? Yes. Um, I live out in Freeport, Illinois. The reason I met you before is we, Jody and I both had run for positions on the Democratic State Central Committee, mm -hmm. and we uh, butted our heads against uh, up against uh, Michael Madigan, and that was a, an incredible um, learning experience. Um, we then, um, about a year ago, we wound up getting involved with a healthcare group who's on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, so we went to a what's called a healthcare camp in Washington D.C. It was amazing four days that we had. We learned an awful lot about both policy and healthcare, and then how to effectively build banners and such that we can actually get our message out more. And so we came back and uh, we have then since uh, started the, the, the group in Washington, D.C., or it's actually based in Baltimore, is called HOPE, mm -hmm. which is Health Over Profit for Everyone. And so Jody and I uh, started this group here in Freeport called HOPE in the Midwest. So we can deal effectively with all. The, there's a lot of different single payer groups that are pushing for Medicare for all in the Midwest, and we're trying to coordinate with them to really push the message forward. Right. And Jody, right? Um, my name is Jody Koss, and I live also in Freeport. Um, and we have been involved. Um, we started an indivisible group, um, and ran for office, and then went to this help uh, health. Uh, action camp a year ago and it totally changed my life it really made me realize how important it is to work on an issue and not necessarily work for a politician to get a politician uh, elected right. um, to move the you know to grow the movement is much more effective once the movement is big enough then you can push any of the politicians into the direction you want them to go and so that's really what we're concentrating on now and have for the last year right it's uh, clear uh, to, to a lot of us that the fight for single-payer health care so we have affordable health care in this country is pri is number one priority because right. we said this on the show one bad day one bad day and right. somebody has stuck with a hospital bill that they cannot pay. And recent report and data is showing that a thousand dollar emergency, a lot of Americans don't have mm -hmm. that. And it, they're at risk of becoming homeless, losing their job, their family and everything. And they're on the streets and it gets just that much more worse. So Ed, when we last spoke, you were talking to me about this event that was gonna be taking place in mm -hmm. the city of Chicago. And you, you were telling me some details behind it, but now I'm more curious because now it's kind of got out there on social media. There's some photos right. of this event that you guys covered and that you guys took video of. So. Uh, Jody and Ed, what is this event that you guys were covering and who is this group that you guys were basically protesting and calling them for you know, real action against? The American Medical Association, which is the AMA, right. is they have their annual um, conference, like this large meeting in Chicago. And so they started, I believe, on a Wednesday and then we, we actually came there on Saturday. But um, the AMA is the most recognized doctors group in the country. They have the most power. They have the most donors. They don't have the most doctors. Their actual, their membership is going down. They do not have, it's similar to what hap was happening with the NRA. The NRA numbers are also down. Um, the AMA um, has been around for 175 years. They've been around for a very long time and they have for a very long time also fought any kind of a universal health care plan. Other plans, have, people don't realize this is not a new idea. This has been brought forth many times and the AMA, the this doctor's organization is staunchly against it. And it's, 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 it's interesting to, to, to I don't understand why they don't, they must not see the whole picture because it is actually a lot of why we're concerned is because there's a large amount of doctor burnout. These doctors really need a different system. And the system that we have is totally broken. They are, cannot function effectively in it. And so something needs to change, but it's, it's like a lot of large organizations, it's really difficult to change that organization. Um, yeah, so I heard um, 
Illinois Single Payer contacted me and said, hey, we're going to be part of this um, protest. Is that something that your group would want to do? And um, I said, absolutely. I thought it was going to be kind of a smaller event. I it really started out with the students. Um, the F Physicians for a National Health Plan is called PNHP. They have an umbrella um, organization called SNAP, which is Students for a National Health Plan. And those students about six months ago um, started talking about wanting to be present at the, um, the AMA convention right. and to do some disrupting there right. and um, so I didn't know about that when I first said that we would want to be a part of that um, because there was an outside rally that was going to happen started at the Blue Cross Blue Shield building and after some speakers there then they had a march up to the Hyatt Regency where the doctors uh, the AMA was meeting and so I actually when I first signed on I thought that that's all I was going to do was be at those two rallies and and the march in between. Um, I'm a photographer, a portrait photographer, and so I, I called um, the person I know with Illinois Single Payer and said, hey, you know, I, I bet you that I can be the most effective if I become a photographer and just okay. go around, uh, you know, and give you access to the photographs. And um, all of a sudden, the entire event just blew up. I think there was 12 to 14 organizations that were sponsoring um, the rally and were helping with the rally. We had National Nurses United, which that was a huge voice. Um, Illinois Single Payer Coalition was obviously there. Um, Jane Adams Senior Caucus. Um, there's a whole bunch more that I won't, I don't have in front of me, but and there was a Lena lot. Turner was there as yes, well. Yes, so uh, Lena Turner was there, yes. And so all of a sudden they called me and said, hey, you know, we have a secret part of this event that's happening. We're going to disrupt the meeting and have a die-in inside while the outside rally is taking place. Okay, so this is something I can relate to myself, uh, myself and Daniel can actually relate to, um, where we actually snuck inside the DNC convention, we yeah. had some photos, and, and apparently you guys did something too, and I don't want to get right. into too many details, go on, right. get anybody in trouble or nothing like this, but you guys took some uh, exclusive photos and video, and we actually have one video, the first video we're going to pull up, and I would like for you guys to at least describe what's going on there, maybe Ed uh, or Jody, I, I don't know which one of you is behind the... Uh, the um, the camera, but I think it's very important that at least to our viewers we see what's going on. So what's exactly happening right here? This this video is right in the very beginning of the meeting when um, at first they only thought they were going to be able to have three or four um, people actually inside what they were calling inside and as it was all there was about 20 25 people and they all got inside and um, so they all started to disrupt the meeting um, and there's a second video that also shows yeah. this from the very beginning yeah the moderator at this point has said well since these people are up front here and they're not going to leave why don't you just take a break so the room these are basically the doctors who have stood up and are just going to mill around and kind of visit with them amongst themselves and they really it was surprising to me that they didn't show much they weren't really concerned it was like this must you know, it was a regular thing it happens then you see one guy's laughing there's no big deal and so to me they were very cavalier about the seriousness of the issue and I and that part kind of surprised me well, it's, it's, it shouldn't surprise anyone because this is exactly how, you know, the establishment continues to control the narrative about single-payer health care. And, you know, you're seeing people walk around pretending nothing's happening. But the truth is, there is something happening. And that is, a lot of Americans are dying because they don't have coverage. And, of course, one bad day, they can lose everything. If you don't have health insurance, you can lose everything. And that's a serious issue that a lot of Americans right. are dealing with. And it goes all the way back to Republican administrations and Democratic administrations mm -hmm. basically continuing to turn a blind eye to right. the real health care problem that's happening in this country and it's very interesting to see this kind of uh, you know kind of footage right there and so again kudos to you guys for actually really covering it so now let's kind of look at some of the photos that are also happening in this event that you covered and maybe you guys can explain in detail too uh, maybe add Jody you could start off uh, what's, what's exactly happening the um, the woman in the front with the, the white hat on she has actually gotten a hold of the microphone this is right at the beginning when they brought the big banner in and there was not a lot of there was just three or four or five people in at this time okay and as we continue to focus on to the next photo, what now we're seeing this die-in happen. Uh, Ed, can you tell us what's happening? Yeah. 
basically there's about 25 people that were able to make access to the room. They brought these tombstones in, which is extremely, uh, uh, such a wonderful visual that we can get. So Jody was able to take these pictures to see these people are laying down in front of the whole audience. And then they are starting to do chants. They are telling their own personal stories about what is, you know, what kind of position they're in with healthcare. Um, I believe there were three people in wheelchairs. Oh, something like that yeah um, it was extremely effective as far as you know the, the, to let the AMA know what's actually happening and these you know are important people that are really having tremendous issues okay and for the next one over here all right so again we're seeing more of this coverage now again you know it, I think we all need to remember that there are people that are really suffering I know that mm -hmm. look we all have issues I mean right. even uh, you know, we here at Harlan's Media, we know people who are still dealing with the ridiculousness of not having coverage. And we're seeing more, uh, I guess, more people standing up, stepping up, and just really addressing the real issue that is people are dying because they don't have coverage. So let's look at the next photo. Yeah, that was the, uh, she was a lot braver than I would have been. She actually is the one that went up and got the microphone and started, um, you know, started the disruption. Right. And, um, so yeah, I had a woman that, you know, I have personally have had to have, uh, I had shoulder replacement, or not shoulder replacement, I had rotator cuff on both of my shoulders, got through all of the um, appointments and the rehab, and about six months after that, they both retore. When I went to the doctor, he basically was like, well, that's good, because now I can do the procedure the way I, I wanted to do it all along, and I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, well, I wanted to put some mesh up there, some biological mesh that would help support it, but your insurance wouldn't let me. So for shoulder, rotator cuff shoulder surgeries in 13 months. And there are people in this country that don't right. have that kind of insurance oh, and right. have to live through the pain. Oh, and right. You, right. Yeah. I know that the, even speaking to Jody uh, off the record, you got you even mentioned you went six months without medication. Well, and I'm on Medicare. So when I thought, when I got to Medicare, that there was going to be, you know, really a smooth sailing because I had had, I'm on, I have Crohn's disease. So I've got what they call biologic, which I didn't know at the time are actually some of the most expensive medications out there. Wow. And it was no problem while I was on Blue Cross. Well, when I went on Medicare, I wound up with the donut hole. And the first time I went to get my prescription renewed, the pharmacist looked really confused and says, wow, you need $2,000 to pick up this medication. I'm, And I stopped and I was thinking, my, well, how am I going to come up with $2,000? And then I thought, well, I, I probably can. So then I asked, well, what do I need next month if I, if I pay the $2,000 now? And then she said, well, you need another $2,000. So I was going to need $4,000 within two months. And I was like, well, there's no way I can do that. Well, then I did some digging and, and I realized that there is another program that I could apply for. It's called Medicare Extra Help. Right. The issue was it actually took six months, though, from that, because that was January 1st. It took six months to get approved for that. For six, six months, I was on steroids and some really terrible problems with my gut. And now I am back on the biologics, but it just, I couldn't imagine why it took that long to actually get back on medicine. Wow, that's really incredible. I, I can't believe so that. This but really, this really came home to me about a week before the AMA protest. Mm -hmm. I was at my local Aldi's supermarket. I have a big Medicare for All sticker on my car, and I had a woman that came up to me crying, and she said, I can't believe I didn't know that there were people in my town that worked on this. She said, my son has diabetes. I can't mm -hmm. afford his insulin. My husband got a really good job, and we thought we were going to be able to buy it, and we couldn't afford it, so he had to quit his job. And she gave me a big hug, and I'm like, yep, that's why I'm doing this, because... All right, you know, now, now I do want um, to kind of also address some of the other photos here that we're looking at, too. Right. Uh, who is this individual that's on the crowd? So her name is Connie. She works for the um, Jane, An Jane Adams... I think she works for the Jane Adams Adam Senior Caucus. All right. Um, and I can't pronounce her last name. I'm sorry. But, That's right. That's yeah, Connie. There was two main um, people that were leading that. So the the goal was to one get at least four or five people inside the room, and the other people could be outside. Um, the next goal was to get everybody on the inside, which is what they did, and to hold the room for 25 to 30 minutes, mm -hmm. which they were able to do. And no one, the, you know, we did not plan, we did not want to be arrested. And so our um, police um, 
liaisons uh, did a great job and then after we had held it for 25 30 minutes um, and everyone had had a chance to tell their stories then this is them you know marching out all right and so as we see the to videos, the outside video yeah, yeah to the see, outside rally as we see the photos we're seeing nina turner who's been a strong mm -hmm. advocate for single pair health care mm -hmm. you know we've interviewed her in the past it's quite clear you guys had a lot of progressive groups backing you up and let's actually look at a few more photos past this we're seeing activists and students stepping up mm -hmm. really addressing the issue because this isn't just you know impacting senior citizens it's impacting everyone of every single age group right. and every single political ideology it doesn't matter who you are one bad day one bad day and you're at the risk of losing everything yes. so now there's a second video too that i kind of want to oh there's another photo well, this, uh, who is this individual really that's like? adam gaffney adam gaffney is the president of the pnhp physicians for national health plan and he was there supporting the students yeah. he came from the east coast and there's all the students with, uh, I think, Adams in that picture. I'm not sure. Um, just getting their photographs. They were really, there was a lot of them there. They really better. carried the whole rallies. And, and you see a lot of ener mm -hmm. energy and movement towards this right. idea of having single pair health care. And in a country, mind you, we have money for the joint strike fighter, but we have no money for <laughs> right. uh, single pair health care, right. apparently. There's and, Adam and, with, in and the there's picture. There's one with other this, photo yeah. there. Can, uh, and again, you're seeing students and activists. And Adam himself right there is really addressing the issue, you're seeing the signs. But there's also another video too that I kind of want you guys to talk about. It's like, a, I guess, another perspective on it. Um, Ed, Jody, maybe you guys can explain again like what's happening in here. So uh, real quick, let's just actually get to playing that. Yeah, this is the outside um, the rally that was taking place. Um, these, all these marchers had marched over from the uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance building about three blocks away, and then they were uh, listening to a lot of uh, different speakers, and uh, we were very happy with the people that did show up. Um, there's a banner there in the back that's just, it doesn't show up so well because of the background, but uh, we we're very happy with the, you know, the amount of people that showed and their excitement. Um, these are people that are very much committed to doing something about this health care problem. All right. So now well, here's another question that, that I think our viewers and subscribers want to know. The aftermath. What's the conversation after this event that took place? What are we doing to really bring out this issue? Because 2020 is going to be very here, going to be here quite shortly, and you know we need to have the Democratic candidates really talk about single payer health care. What is the aftermath now that this protest is done? What's the next step? Well, I, <laughs> we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work. Um, right now, we have two really fairly strong bills. We have Bernie's bill in the Senate, which um, his bill has four specific problems that we would like him to do to strengthen his bill. And then we have Pramila Jayapal's bill, which is 1384. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've do, been doing a lot of education. Um, right now, out in Freeport, we're getting ready to do a film series. Mm -hmm. um, one is called Fix It. Healthcare and the uh, healthcare at a tipping point, and then the second movie is about big pharma, and so some of what we do are tabling at different farmers markets and different events, and then these movie series, and then collecting emails, uh, people that will be on our email list that will um, make sure that you know we in involve them the next time that we we need them to come and help us. Right. So, our whole focus right now is education. Mm -hmm. That people have to know that we are already spending enough money to do this. Mm -hmm. the, and that's really the because everybody says, oh, it's too expensive. How are we ever going to pay for it? We're already spending the money between people when they pay their co pays, when they pay deductibles, when they pay their premiums, what, what the government already spends on Medicare and Medicaid. What you know, there's all this money, which is trillions of dollars, is being spent every year. It's just not being spent wisely. So we need people to understand that a single payer system. We call it Medicare for all. Actually, we call it National Improved Medicare for All because we what we want is actually better than Medicare. So, for instance, for me, I wouldn't have a donut hole to, to have to deal with. You know, the, but the, everyone's dealing with that situation. Yes, exactly. Everybody's dealing with really incredibly high drug costs. They're dealing with you know how I, just you can't you make a decision. Do you want to go to the doctor? Can you afford to go to the doctor? All these crazy things that we do before we actually get health care. So we want people to know 
know that it is possible that we need to spread the word to others, not just our friends, but to everyone we meet that this is going to, this is going to be, it's, it's on, if you talk to most people, they will tell you that healthcare is screwed up. It's really broken. So, so then uh, as a final question then for our viewers and subscribers who are going to probably have more questions about your organization, where can they find you guys online and on social media? So then perhaps there's people here in the Midwest, mm -hmm. Illinois, uh, they can maybe volunteer and help out. Mm -hmm. um, well, the National Hope website is called healthoverprofit.org. You can reach it there. There's a lot of materials there that you can find. Um, then Illinois Single Payer Coalition is another uh, website here for Illinois. And then our group is called Hope in the Midwest. We don't have a website, but we are on Facebook. And you look for Hope in the Midwest, Health Over Profit for Everyone. And we have both a page and a group. And so we do a lot of posting there. Um, and then the other, this is just kind of a little plug. Um, but some of the art that we made, the big banner that we made and, and brought here, we learned that from an organization called Backbone, and mm -hmm. they are um, out in Washington, and they give um, people wonderful, great tools to make this, you know, really great art. To, that's, that's a fantastic yep. note to end it on. Yep. Ed, Jody, I can't thank you guys enough for spreading this message. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's going to be some more follow-up. Hopefully this conversation continues on, and specifically right. during the primary, and we get a strong progressive candidate right. that's going to fight for single-payer issues right. and might most importantly get single-payer health care available here in the United States so that we can have it. This is Kit with Hard Lens Media. Peace, and let's all do we can to build a better future. Hey, did you like that video? Hit the subscribe button, hit that ring bell notification so that way you're informed when we upload more content to the Hard Lens Media YouTube channel.